Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, Spence, let's trip out. Pretend it's red. Close, close yeah. it <laughs> and spewing everywhere. <laughs> so you we're talking about actually, I'll tell you what makes me happy about that is how happy you got over it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about Guar. Now, now, if Jason would have done it, I would have guessed something completely different. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh Never yeah. Mind. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Same. I've seen that video. This is yeah, yeah, this yeah. is not my <laughs> high school health class. I'm good on that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so yes, Guar. I don't know. How do we want to do this? What? When were you guys introduced to Guar? Terry's new to Guar. I can tell you the first time I ever saw it, and then I was like, "That's kind of crazy," and I didn't know if they were real or not. Go ahead. Pretty standard Empire Records. Empire Records? Yeah, okay, yep. I forgot. I actually Fair forgot enough. they cameoed that movie. Yep. Give me that, that was the first time for me. Damn. I gotta watch that movie again, too. It's on Hulu. <laughs> I've been meaning to. <laughs> I love that movie. Yep. It's yep. Manning Day. It's a great but, uh, fucking movie. Oh, my God. Oh, it's oh, fantastic. Awesome. Musically, and like individually, if you break it into segments, it's a great movie. Yes. The, the Absolutely. Movie is absolute garbage. But <laughs> yeah. like it is a it is a it is peak for its time. Yes. 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 Up, it was an attempt at making an alternative life movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's what they did. Got a great yeah. soundtrack. Oh, it's an amazing know. soundtrack. Yeah. Back when movies had awesome soundtracks and it was important. That is the whole purpose behind that was because of the soundtrack. Yeah. That yeah. for us to celebrate Rex Manning Day. Yes. Rex Manning Day. Another another <laughs> holiday from a movie that people love. <laughs> but, All right. So that anyway. was my experience. Yes. Yeah. That was your introduction to Guar. Yes. So, Jason, how about you? Uh, all right. So the first time I ever heard them or heard of them, which one are we going with? Either or. All right. Uh, first time I ever heard of it was on a buddy's jacket. Okay. It was a friend of mine that I was in high school with. Just had a guar patch. It was the eyeball with the bat wings. Yeah, you know, the guar logo over the top of it. So I mean, it's pretty yeah. old logo. Yeah. Uh, and I remember thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. What comic book does it go to? <laughs> right? And then he said, oh, it's a band. You got to check it out. And I'm like, okay, if I ever have an additional $15 to spend on a tape, I will go check it out. Right. <laughs> yes. I never did. But fortunately, I had a lot of metalhead friends that were adamant about having this shit because there was blood. Of course. <laughs> I don't even know that they liked it. Like they were more into Slayer and shit like that, but they would occasionally throw Guar on when they wanted to drink and party. Right. <laughs> it was right. fun. So, uh, For most metalheads, it was like fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Was it was like yeah. the bouncy version of metal. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, to be fair, I mean, I know that probably sounds absurd to people, but when you're listening to, as, as mentioned, when you're listening to Slayer, and somebody's like, "Hey, check this out," and throws on a Guar album, they don't 
they may both be metal, but they are very different from one another. Well, like they would kind of throw jokes in and stuff, you know, like that's how it was when my uncle would talk about them, you know, like when they were like, how do you hide soap from a hippie? Yeah, or, or how, how do you hide soap from a hippie? Well, I mean, that was on the soap. soap. That Slotorama. Yeah. 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 That, that, that song is absolutely wonderful. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> right? So, that so wasn't even know, the first like, album that I heard, though. The first album that I heard was uh, it was either This Toilet Earth or uh, America Must Be Destroyed. Which one had Gorgor on it? Oh, fuck. Yeah. America Must Be Destroyed, I, I think. I think America Must Be Destroyed because it was right, it was around the time Phallus in Wonderland was uh, yeah. being passed around amongst my friends. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, so that would have been the first time I actually heard them. Uh, moment I heard them, and especially after seeing Phallus in Wonderland, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah, this is <laughs> fucking great. This is what every fucking band should be. Yeah. Why yeah. isn't this happening right now? Like, at the time, like, why aren't the new kids on the block doing this? Because this is better. <laughs> This is way better. <laughs> <laughs> this is entertaining. This is, yeah. Yeah, this right. is this. Uh, Craig, how about you? Oh, fast. <laughs> I, I first heard of Guar and first got obsessed with Guar when I was like maybe, I think turning six. And I would spend all day like, my aunt was in school and she would let out all her like heavy metal tapes and everything for me, like the VHS one. And Guar was on like every single tape doing an interview and like being in the monsters and all that kind of weird shit. I was like, oh my God. And <laughs> that's all I would talk about with Guar. Yeah, my really. family hated it. But then, <laughs> yeah, when I was like 12 for Christmas, I got the entire, like their entire catalog up to that year. And oh, wow. Yeah, that's when I really first heard them. <laughs> <clears throat> right. So, I told you guys, like, my background growing up. I wasn't allowed to watch videos of Butthead and shit like that, yeah. right? But Me, I was you had to watch... same, yeah, you and I had a lot of the same. But I was growing. allowed to watch, like, Terminator 2. <laughs> it's very weird. And That's fucking, weird. like, slaughter fest of movies. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, I can't remember exactly how old I was when I saw the clip, but it was, it was something on VH1, like, some kind of special talking about, like, crazy artists or some shit like that was it where of course you know no it might have been really it, it might have been episode. and you know and they're talking about this band that was on jerry springer yep. on an episode dedicated to shock rock and i see this dude sitting on stage with this shit hanging off his face <laughs> these giant spikes on his fucking shoulders and i'm like i need to know more about these guys <laughs> And, yeah. and after that, like, after that, like, I remember in that interview, Dave Brocky saying, I didn't, like, I didn't know it was Dave Brocky, like, at the time. Like, I didn't know that's who was telling this information yeah. to me. But I remember him saying, Guar is going to continue on for as long as it can. It does not matter if we are all here or not. It will continue. And I was just like, okay. And that just stuck with me. And a few years later, I get to high school. And I meet these kids, and we're all part of the Central PA punk scene, you know, punk, metal, hardcore, whatever the fuck we were into at the time. <laughs> and they play this song for me. And I was just looking. It's also off of America Must Be Destroyed. Have you seen me? <laughs> and, I was, and I was just like, this, this is interesting. <laughs> Because at the time, I'm all into, like, Newfound Glory, Green Day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just getting into, like, the Ramones and the Misfits. And <laughs> so I'm like, what am I listening to? You know, I put it off until I was, like, 20. <laughs> and when I was 20, I joined a band with the dude I had known for years. And he is he was obsessed with Guar. And he goes, no, 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 no. And he just, he plays me the Salamanizer. And I was like, okay, <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> now I get it. I understand. Then he showed me the uh, live in Antarctica video, and it was just all downhill from there. Yeah. So. Martini. Yes. <laughs> and then I got the Bloodbath and Beyond DVD. And the, yeah, it's just, Guar's a good time people <laughs> yeah. a lot of good memories tied up in that shit like yeah. oh for sure you know just not even just listen to music for that matter the amount of bonding that could occur if you were 
like a let's say preteen or teenage growing up in a relatively rural area and you happen to run across somebody who was into that shit instant friends just oh yeah, yeah. Guys fucking buddies. yeah oh me and those guys that were into guar yeah. like back in high school we were always we were tight as uh, hell after that yeah it's like, I was like if you like this you probably yeah. like this you know what i mean yeah. so yeah it's crazy because like finding people who like that shit where i grew up was just hard yeah but like my, my uncle, uncle introduced... had the grunt of that because he's like eight years older than i am and i'm, I'm mm. 42 now so he's he just turned 50 and so he had the worst of that like part, but at least he introduced me and my brother, the next generation, to enough of the stuff that we could spread it on to the next, you know, right. to our kids. I, well, yeah. I was just about to say, like my uncle, yeah. he's twelve years older than me. He introduced me yeah. to Kiss and Alice Cooper yeah. when I was a little kid. Right. And so I've see, always, I've always been a fan and of like and that anthrax shock and all rock. That. Theater, theatrical <laughs> yeah. shock rock, whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, to it was it. the same for me. Like that's kind of what I was into. Like I would watch it, those Alice Cooper videos yeah. and everything. And yep. Yeah. And like and like you <laughs> said, Craig. Like I, I've always been a fan of like the monsters and like the crazy makeup and shit. Like, yeah. Like the effects that go yeah. into that was the also art. something my uncle again. My uncle, as much as we may not talk now, he introduced me to everything that I'm absolutely in love with now. Yeah. And I can at least throw that out to him every time. That's his bone. I can always find. I'm that silver lining person. Even if there's a bad situation, there's always the one thing you can find. And he gave mm. me metal. He gave me horror movies. He gave me a different perspective. Right. Yeah. And then. Well, okay. Like, so. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the band definitely mm -hmm. worked towards that. The 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 horror connection, like as you just mentioned, horror movies. Yeah. So we kind of keep coming back to that. I will say yeah. every person I knew who was into Guar was also into horror, sci-fi, fantasy, and like all the shit yeah. that I like, like yeah. made me tick Absolutely. At, at the time. So yeah. I'm gonna quote I'm gonna quote the uh the uh, drummer from the, the Suicide Puppets the other day when I talked to him. He says, All of us metal people, all of us rock people, we're all geeks. Yeah. See, Pretty I much. Was, actually, <laughs> the funny thing is I used to hear that. Once again, this is guy having grown up in Georgia in the late '80s, early '90s. Yeah. So the the whole thing, like coming down to like, you see a bunch of guys walking around with mohawks, angry expressions on their faces, with studs and spikes and chains hanging all over the place. And nine times out of ten, nobody had enough money to afford drugs and or alcohol. So consequently, what we're we doing, hanging out at a fucking mall. Yeah. Yep. And if we're doing that, we're sitting in somebody's basement playing fucking Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. 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 Or talking about comic books or watching the new horror movie. The fact is, it's a Yep, it's an insular little crowd. It truly it is. is. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And here we are now. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, not no fucking change. <laughs> I have less hair now. That's what's happening. Yep. Yep. We're yep. actually working on some D&D shit now. So. I, no, I know. When, uh, whenever Matt's got a minute, I really would like help with that because my other oh, yeah, I mean, I, kind yeah. of fell through. Oh, the so. D &D thing. I forgot. We do have Speaking of D&D, &D, right? <laughs> but, uh, no, we do. That is something that must must go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> That's entertainment. That is so much entertainment. It's geeky entertainment, but it's I'm, hilarious. I'm excited because it's something extra to do. You know, like I, I'm hitting that point where, you know, we talk about all having ex extra projects, this or that. You know, this is my extra project. Right. So. Yeah, for sure. That's a good thing. This is yeah, a. Yeah, it is. No, I enjoy it. I make sure I'm checking on stuff I'm, I'm being a part of trying to at least yeah <laughs> uh, but okay so next question yep. terry i know you haven't seen them but, but jason craig have you had the experience of a guar show oh god yes. wow. <laughs> I kind of, wow okay I, i've seen them twice so i got some catching out to do but <laughs> when i got to, i got to see them after that that was they were with I mentioned Jenna Tortures earlier when she was talking about where they're at. Jenna Tortures. Wow. Like it was, it was, a, it was the best grade. It was in Atlanta. It was fucking wonderful. Wow, yeah. it, was a, it was literally the first time I were going to a show and they're like, wear light blue or white, get close. Yes. Yeah. Close as you can. Oh, lost the shirt. What about grown up by this point, anyways? But <laughs> outgrown. <laughs> Outsize. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a. 
actually in reference though to that the other thing we were talking about too the whole idea that you hear about all these horrible things happen at these festivals these different fucking shows all over the world or concerts whatever you want to call them the fact is i mean i was relatively young and i was maybe with one other person in downtown atlanta and i, I felt safe as i could possibly fucking be yeah at a wash yep I was at yeah, I was at one of those metal shows in Seattle. You could even be in the back alley of this or that, and I never felt like I was in any danger ever. And I feel that shit in my gut most of the time. It's weird. That's it's a weird yeah. thing. It's not what you'd expect, yeah. especially depending upon what media outlet is covering whatever fake outrage is going on. But yeah, like, you know, yeah. There's no <laughs> we usually look out for our, out for our own. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy how it works out. The show that they're killing people yeah. at is the safest show you could be at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it was kind of the, the same level of shit that went along with, oh, you did fucking rap. Rap is, is dangerous. It causes people to do bad things. No, it doesn't. Never did. No. There was never a fucking issue. You don't, you don't hear about, or at least you didn't used to hear about, like, any type of hip-hop show going off where people were shooting each other in the fucking parking lot. That shit didn't yeah. happen. No. You know? Although... Yeah. I guess getting trampled or crushed at any type of new school rap thing might happen. Well, where I lived in the 90s, you would definitely hear about that stuff, but it's because people were trying to be hard. It wasn't the, the people who were actually into that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was somebody who showed up music. It wasn't somebody. Yeah. People who were was... trying to be hard. It's the people who were trying to, to make it. And that's just dumb. Like, stop ruining everybody's good time. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> that's just That happened yeah. Uh, actually back to I'm um, not Guar never it never happened but like there were plenty of shows in Atlanta back in the day like it was it was they were great shows they were comfortable and they were safe to be at up until some local fucking group of thugs semi literate <laughs> angsty shaven headed morons yeah exactly would just try and start it, shit exactly and, with, and when I say thugs I mean any group of people that are coming mm -hmm. up up trying to cause problems yeah. in a, in a in a situation any group i mean it doesn't matter right where you come from on that but uh, we all have our dumb asses craig yeah. <laughs> what, what was your first bar show uh the carnival of chaos tour at crock rock nice yeah. that's a that was yeah. good carnival, was <laughs> carnival chaos the one that had r2 on it had what which one carnival chaos the album yeah all right, which, which name some of the more popular songs? Which one was Fish? Uh, Penguin Attack. Ragnarok. <laughs> oh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Oh hell, come on now, guys. <laughs> Dude, they all blend together after a while. You listen to a band for fucking twenty something. No, I years. think that was Carnival of Chaos. Oh. Oh. This fuck is not on Ragnarok. Is it on Carnival of Chaos? I'm about to find out. <laughs> I got what's great about like when I got into what was wonderful about this is my car at the time still had a tape deck right? yeah and all the fucking different places were switching over to the, the DVD CDs specifically so they were selling all their tapes discounted like a motherfucker which meant I could oh, afford yes. any tape I wanted fish fuck is on the switchover media everything. is the best right. pumper of collections I tell you what <laughs> <laughs> we kill everything <sighs> holy oh, shit that's what wasn't it? Yeah. We yeah. kill everything with and fucking an animal. Great song, by the oh, way. I'm fucking an animal. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about which one had uh did that have commode on it too? Oh shit, I'm just commode. I'm not just your toilet, I am the commode. <laughs> fucking song it was the most ridiculous song that could have ever been written. And the fact that they did it and put it on there, I just I like I have respect <laughs> at it after that because it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> It, like all their other songs were at least like there was an edge to them. That one was just dumb, and I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, the song's called Commode. It's either Commode. I can't remember exactly. There's just a line in it. It's basically a toilet that wants to be fed. Oh jeez. <laughs> that is the entire point of the song, and it's literally it's sung from multiple perspectives, and it ends with the toilet's perspective. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, Look Who's Talking To when he's potty training. <laughs> no, seriously, that. Training. Exactly that. I swear they might as well yeah. come up with it from it. Yeah, yeah. Penguin yeah. Attack by the Carnival of Chaos. 
<laughs> was, whatever album second. had Nitro burning funny ball. Uh, but uh, the side note, the toilet in Look Who's Talking Too was voiced by Mel Brooks. Oh, that, that is funny. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Talking to you, you little piss. Hey, get over <laughs> here. Other side note. Wonderful thing about I don't this is this happens far too often here, but I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> Mel Brooks, one of the best Hollywood stories I've ever heard in my entire life was uh, when they were filming for Young Frankenstein, I think. It was either Young Frankenstein or Blazing Saddles. I think it was Young Frankenstein. They sent uh, the, the dailies off to their uh, production company to let them see what they had done up to that point, right? And yeah. uh, so, of course, these guys in the boardroom sit around, they watch it, and they send back a bunch of notes and everything. So Mel Brooks basically takes their notes Folds them back up, sticks them back in an envelope with another note, sends it back, said, make no mistake, gentlemen, we do not care about your opinion. We're just letting you know what your money's doing. <laughs> like, just, that is the most baller fucking, like, you don't hear about that. <laughs> yeah. That is just mic a drop. baller move. Back before mic drop. It was the paper drop. <laughs> the guy, seriously, the amount of balls that it takes to tell the people that are bankrolling your entire career, I don't Fucking care what you want to see. Well, I'm just letting you know in the how end, you're using your money. In the end, you're the one making them way more money. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Dogs are going nuts for a minute. I had to mute. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were doing shadow puppets. I'm guessing somebody's here. I don't know. But, uh... is, that, is that what that was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to Watch teach my daughter that, by the way. She, she can't quite well, figure out this part, so I just turned into this. <laughs> and I showed her the giraffe, and that really blew her fucking mind. <laughs> Three, though, it's not hard, hard to do. I'm not proud of myself. I'm just saying. I don't know. For me, it was uh, somewhere between 2006 and 2008. I saw Guar. It had to have been 2006. When I was like 18, I saw him at uh, the Crowbar in State College, Pennsylvania. Really you small. That place a lot. That, that place holds some memories. Bro, that was my home. Yeah. <laughs> that was my home. That's where I met every band I ever saw for a long time. Like I saw some big bands there. Like first time I saw the Misfits. First time I saw Hatebreed, Streetlight Manifesto. Fuck. Yeah. Like yeah. everybody played the fucking crowbar, and it was great because it was this tiny little fucking bar, and it was all ages. You know what I mean? You had to be 21 to go up to the bar, obviously, but I didn't drink, so whatever. I didn't care about that. I wanted to see music. And, like, <laughs> so Guar. The, you've been to the Masquerade in Atlanta. Yes. Yeah, like that, I mean, similar, like that That place. A lot smaller than the Masquerade. See. Is Crowbar smaller than that? A lot. Is it? Yeah, so there was. Lot, like, you're talking about a 30-foot stage. Okay, so it would have been, uh, there was another place called the Samba Reptile back in the day that would have been pretty close to that. I would yeah. say. Like, think of a shitty dive bar stage. Oh, yeah, then absolutely. So I'm wrapped out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just elevated and like, <laughs> you, but you could squeeze like 500 people on the floor, another 200 like up the in the showcase bar. And probably California. have like a backstage, backstage down. room that consisted of a yeah, backstage, backstage was in the basement. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, but like, you had to go past all the merch tables and shit yeah. in the lobby. Yeah. And that's where all the bands would hang out and shit. Like, that's where you went to the floor. That's where you went to get, like, the non-alcoholic bar. That's where you went to get backstage. But yeah. you couldn't get backstage unless you had a VIP pass and shit. But, like, yeah. nobody ever had them. So. But the bands were always in the fucking lobby anyway, so you just hung out with the bands. Yeah. It was great. I didn't get to do that with Guar, but I did get to see Guar. And just <laughs> seeing all those guys in those giant-ass costumes crammed on this little tiny stage... <laughs> I was gonna say they probably go wow. right off stage and just like collapse. Oh it's like oh, like do they see past parts of their costumes to like know where? Oh they're... my god, it was fantastic <laughs> <laughs> because like there was like a backstage area where like extra amps and shit were kept just in case. Yeah. But they kept all the props and stuff back there, and like the actors that were when they had to change costumes, that's where they would go and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, but. <laughs> Britney Spears was pregnant at the time. <laughs> they bring her out on a, uh, they bring her out on a like a rack, like a think a yeah. medieval torture rack. Yep. Yeah. And 
<laughs> and they just they proceed to cutting her open and <laughs> umbilical cords around the head, rip the baby in two, and <laughs> put one half on one shoulder pad and the other yep. half on the other shoulder pad. You're gonna hurt your baby. <laughs> he did the rest of the show with with the baby on his shoulder pads. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like the beginning of the show it was great because they have a uh, Hitler ah, come out ah. and start giving a speech Yeah. yeah. halfway through the speech you see Odor poke his head out from behind the curtain and just go like wave <laughs> comes out with his battle axe like tiptoeing out on the stage and just knocks <laughs> dude's head off it's fucking great. <laughs> of course the blood just goes all over the place yep but yeah Guar show <laughs> It's a, it's an experience. I, that was a perfect it's an experience point. everybody needs to go to. Still so hard, mm-hmm. from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. From what I understand, I haven't had the chance to see them with Mike, but I would like to. <laughs> so we'll, uh, get I saw them in a special. I mean, we've recently. all had the chance to see them to see Mike with them, but like not as a vocalist. Right. Right. I mean, I had the chance last summer. I just didn't know about it until the next day. <laughs> yeah, I moved over here when they uh the, when I knew that they were coming this direction, and so it was kind of over or over for a minute. Wow. Any good shows, right? Any good shows, yeah. But I'm getting back out in the community. Much, oh, I know, much I more good stuff. <laughs> I did. I did eventually get to see them at the Crock Rock, though, Craig. Yeah, I saw them with uh cattle decapitation. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> we were talking about them off camera, but yeah, yeah, like they're just, I don't know, it's a sight that needs to be held. That's it, everybody needs to experience it once, like at least once, at least once. Just go, even if you don't go up front, stand back. That's and if nothing cool. else, at least you'll keep cool. Yeah, because you're getting sprayed. With I cold definitely. Liquid want to make sure I because there's things in my life that I wanted to experience at least once and had to miss out on later you know because obviously somebody died and they don't carry on the legacy of the the band after that point or whatever but definitely something that I I need to experience and it's not going to be something that my husband's going to want to come with me (laughs) because he doesn't he doesn't do my horror stuff he he tolerates my metal stuff. He'll go there because he's my bouncer. Would he do the <laughs> absurdity though? Because that's the thing that always got me. Was like the yeah. like you're watching a guar show. It is the most absurd thing you will ever see in your life. Yeah. But also, yeah, and I'm going into it for the entertainment value alone. Well, that's what Seriously. I'm saying. Like a student, as, as yeah. it's just fucking ridiculous. But at the same time, you get into it. You yeah. really yeah. get into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no, no, no. When I when I go to something, I get into it. I'm that girl that's flail. If even if I can't go into the mosh pit, because sometimes I'm not allowed. Uh, but and that's my own thing it's my own thing and nobody tells me i can't go but but sometimes i'm not allowed in the mosh pit and um i like to make sure i experience the music as fully as possible so i'm that person who looks like they're having a fit even if i'm off to the side <laughs> and on that next note. time I go, I'll, I'll have my husband record a little bit of it for you so you can see i'm in the music i feel we'll turn it into a promo music <laughs> yeah. 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 Serious, I will. I will let it happen. Just, just for the love of the show. Fuck yeah! <laughs> if I let other people see it, why wouldn't I let you guys or the fans see it? Right? <laughs> it's the one On that, time I let myself go. It's a. Uh, I, I call it letting out some demons. <laughs> yeah, I need yeah. that from time to time. Uh, d- don't we all? <laughs> My after Taco Bell thing. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> <laughs> on that note, let's go ahead and take a quick little break. Yep. We'll Boom. Come back and we'll figure out what we're going to talk about on the, in the in between. <laughs> oh no, what was the neighbor's thing? <laughs> What about my marshmallows? Just so all of the strawberry flavored marshmallows. My ghosts are big too. Big deal. New crunchy ghosts in monster cereals. This here's the cruncher and the 
Caesar Tough Track with all the roaring, fired up, fuel injected power of the big boy. Like Grave Digger, King Crunch, Carolina Crusher, Equalizer, Feel a Humongous Horsepower, The Tremendous Torque, Revenos RPM to the max. That's pulverizing power. I like that. Tough Tracks, Mind Blowing, Keep On Going, Trailblazing, Amazing Monster Machines. Monster Mind Trucks. Tough tracks, be sold separately from Galoo. Are you coming up? Tough tracks. This episode of the Geek Den is brought to you Ooh. by our friends at Horror Adorables. Are we looking for that? Check out Horror Adorables. Right. Mine's upstairs. Get yourself a fancy little mug. Here, I'll do it correct for you. Yeah, we, got two, <laughs> yep, we got two sides of this story. Yep. yep. And so they were Johnny Necro and, and his wife. I know Anne. it's backwards. They gave me my tag name and I love it. <laughs> no. Well, luckily it's only backwards for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was a little too late to have my moniker put oh, on. Oh no, the top. As, as soon as I was like, can we do I this? know I didn't even think about it. <laughs> but anyway, so last time I saw War was in 2009. <clears throat> Oh, uh, about May, I would say. And for the, like three years later, Corey Smoot died, who played Flatus yeah. Maximus. Yep. And then about a year and a half after that, Dave Brocky died. Yep. That was a so did that one. I will like I always wake up to that news, and I hate waking up to that news. Yeah. Like that's how I found out about Bob Saget. That's how, you know all that shit. So yep. and Betty White. <laughs> And so I was lucky enough. I'm lucky enough to say that I got to see them live. You guys as well, yeah. because well, I'm sure. To be fair, though, we, you got to see them live, and we got to see them live with the original lineup. Yeah, yeah. They, they still exist, man. Mm-hmm. Well, original, mm-hmm. just, fine. Not the complete original. Cl- if, you, if you want to go completely original, Dave Rocky was definitely the last <laughs> remaining original member. He w- well, but with Corey right, so- Smoot and Casey Orr and you know all these other and Mike Dirks. No, Mike and- Dirks was in it from the beginning too. No, Man, no, 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 no. Mike, Jizmak Mike Dirks was, wasn't since, uh, originally. Uh, Jismac has been playing drums since. Uh, Jismac's been with them since '89. Yeah, yeah. Which same was, with Mike Dirks. Uh, Maybe you're right. Yeah. But Jismac played. '89 was. On Scum Dogs. Yes. Come dogs was but he also song. played. No, Scum Dogs. All right, just Mac was Scum. That was that. That was his, his first. first album? That was his first album. Okay, but that's also you could argue that was also when they suddenly decided to really kick up the music. Yeah, well, the, when it yeah. wasn't so much about the stage shows, it was about actually playing well. No, Mike and, Dirk started in '85. '85. When did Guar start as a whole? I think they cut their first thing. What '86, '87. But I, I know, think I know, doing Mark was not thing at like nineteen eighty five. But it, regardless, like you get to see, like I know, because all I know is that Dave Brocky was the last remaining original member, and now mm-hmm. the band has no original members left. And when I go to see him, characters, I'll never have that yes, experience you guys, have. certain characters are original. Well, but, that was like, the idea, though. It wasn't I mean even we said on the Sally Jesse Raphael thing the idea that Guar could live because it was a costume because it was an outfit because yes. it was a character yep anybody, yeah, they could play to infinity because anybody could pick up the moniker and run with it right, exactly Which now I, I would say, say cool about Lothar the fact that they not did, everybody they has the same style of playing even if they try sometimes you know what I mean like. That's where I'll never get the same thing that you guys experience because not everybody has that same style when they pick up a right. guitar. Not, not everybody has that same style when they put the sticks right. in their hands. And you know, you watch the you watch the documentary, right? So when you were watching yeah. the documentary yep. and, and it came yep. out with uh, flat or not flatus Maximus, but uh, Blothar's original character. Somebody help me out here. Not uh, I. Beefcake. 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 beefcake Blothar, right? Blothar's the original Beefcake. Yes, yeah, the original Beefcake. Yeah. And he was yeah. younger. He was a big bass player, but he was a talented bass player. He yeah. was yeah. good at what he did. Yeah. Him showing up changed the band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His playing ability suddenly meant they had to get other people that could play and keep up. 
Yep. So the version of war that most of us first experienced and loved came about right around that time. I per from my standpoint, I would argue that the version you have right now without Dave Brockie is not the same Guar, yeah. but it's still the same emphasis. It's nice. still yes. the same theme. Nice it's to know somebody coming show. in later in, in that world, you know? You just don't well, have the you don't have orders, orders, you know, like yeah. it's still the same show. There they was a lot of it all. Right. They do. Oh, and I'm sure it's a, they do a fucking great job. They have to, yeah. like, because that's all legacy to live up to, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 But, you um, watch their newer like concerts on YouTube, see. it's still the same band. Oh, it's intense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Same level of showmanship, man, if not better. Yeah. And the covers not they've done for the AV Club. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> well, I was going to say, Come look on. at the. Uh, What's weird if you stop and consider, like, and obviously they cared, they cared that Dave Brocky was gone. This yeah, wasn't one yeah. of those, hey, we have to keep running because we're making money. Because let's face yeah. it, it's war. How much money did they really make? Right. It's war, yeah. exactly. No, they How purposely much they were like, we're not going to sell out, like, that we're going to play, but we're not no, going to sell out. They just out. kept running with it. And they got yeah. an original member who maybe originally kicked him in the ass and got him to be something not better, but different. Yeah, yeah. So, you have the fact that Dave Brocky himself <laughs> sat there and said on an interview. That anybody could take one of these characters over, and they chose not to do that. They chose not to make another fucking odorous or Flatus. Yeah, yeah, was the same Lattice Lattice Lattice, yeah. and plus the Lattice that's the, to me that's fucking cool as shit because they didn't have to. They could have gotten anybody yep. to take Dave Brocky's place. It would have felt like kicking the ass to every fan. I'm sure that if Dave Brocky had left the band and somebody else had already taken over the odorous character, it would have been a totally different story. Yeah, but yeah. considering. It's different passes away you, you really want to he was them, still but not actively them. playing the character yeah they yeah. had to k give the character the viking funeral yeah. that he deserved yeah was it also by the way if you like you listen to salamanizer you mentioned salamanizer mm -hmm. earlier like salamanizer if you listen to that song it was dave brocky's fucking vocals and they are perfect yeah all the way there here's a little something for god like the entire start all the way through the end that Man. is a great song yeah both are can fucking pull it off yeah. Yes, he can. Like, it's still, like, the fact that that was done, I mean, obviously there was consideration and there was time put into it. They didn't lose anything as their creation. The band yeah. itself didn't lose anything. The fans yeah. did, and they as individuals obviously did. I mean, you can't replace a person. You just fucking can't. Yeah. No. No. And, and, they, and they are well aware of that. And that, to me, that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, that is... That's I like how they awesome. honor... They honor, they don't necessarily replace. Like, I like right. that aspect. Of yeah. It. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the Flattest right, Maximus wait, wait, character, wait. last played by Corey Snoot, who's no longer with us, like, he died while playing the character, so they retired the character. But, yeah. yeah. And, but how many people played Flattest? Like, four? Be in between, like, people filling in for photos and stuff, I'd probably say, like, closer to 10 people. Have been in that costume. Well, hang on. Let me. I have it all up here. So, <laughs> all right. So they're all right here. Computer. They're all right here. Jesus. One, two, three, five. Five different people have played Flat oh. mm. One of them. One of whom is the current guitar player for Rise Against. Huh. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Was Which that just, in the? Uh, was that in the um special? Yeah, it's uh, he yeah. may have been. He may yeah, have been he was interviewed, interviewed in the. Yeah, Zach yeah, Blair, I, I, Zach I think he was. It. Yeah, Zach Blair. Yeah, but uh, and he played on a couple albums. He was with them for a few years. So, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but after Corey died, because he was still playing the character, you had no, you really don't have a choice but to yeah, give it a send off of some yeah. sort. Like send it like. Because they said Flattis just went went back to his home planet. Right. Is what they said. Yeah. That's that's the cool thing about that is that because they were aliens from somewhere else, you know, like they'd be like, yeah, he just went to his home planet. Kind of like a men and Well, <laughs> another, a fun fact, Otis Yerungus was once a spokesman on, well, for a number of episodes was a spokesman on, uh, was the intergalactic spokesman on Fox News is red. Yeah, on Fox right. News. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you can find them all on YouTube. You got to watch these. <laughs> it's funny because, like, 
it's like, some of the our our television we have kind of a different it's it's funny because you know you guys are over there and i'm over here and like our fox news stuff is so different like the, in, in the middle of the night like you know because of bill nye like we actually had one of the guys from bill nye do like an, an extra thing like the extra late night show you know so there was late night I and just don't was, watch yeah, whatever news, but yeah I yeah we know. got we you know because you know you had your own local stuff that comes on after the, the no, no, main no. i mean stuff like the national is, channel fox yeah. news yeah no i don't oh, watch okay. like the branded okay. channels i just watch just like the, local news. The, but no, that would have been in the 90s right no oh. and otis was on there yeah no well, whatever fox no was the 90s, early think... 2000s Mid it would have been in early he was mid. On there from like the mid 2000s mid to late 2000s all the way up until he died yeah oh That's goodness real. yeah he was up yeah, there so like yeah like i said no, we have a different like, Red eye show in the middle of the night because we're over here though. Like 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 yeah, it's, it's different. Ah, uh, you can still find them on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, it up. look up. YouTube Odor, all the way. Come on, that's where the internet eye. gives us great it. things that we get. That's why I it's like what we do best. here. And Andrew because WK you guys are over there, and there is yeah. way different stuff over there than over here. And now yeah. we get to share it and let it kind of like fly. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to see him on Fox News, because knowing how he felt about Republicans. Yeah. And Fox News being a predominantly Republican-run channel. Oh, no, absolutely. And just to see him on there being Odor Shiranga uh, was some of the best television you'll ever see. I don't care if you're a Guar fan. I don't care what who what kind of person you are. I think the funny if, if you want to laugh, watch that shit because it's whole. Yeah, well, no, two absolutely. Funniest I, would definitely I think check Guar it out. has ever produced was the meat sandwich video where he plays basketball with Jesus, and, mm-hmm. and the beef and, and the Jesus in one on one. Episode. Yeah, yeah. evil man yeah. episode. Oh, where he's man, in the bed now and you've, like, you've made a liar out of you've made a liar out of me, Craig. <laughs> what? Because I just told somebody earlier that we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was still funny. Damn it all. Damn it all. <laughs> but, yes, but Craig is the super fan of Gore. No, he, he's like, dude, no, not, maybe not no, quite like you with wrestling, but I mean, he's been there a lot. Oh, yeah. He was there at like, 12. He was there at 5. <laughs> I mean, much like with you, has been with horror. Yeah. yeah, that's why I say I am the wrestling guy. You're like, the wrestling if I, guy. If I, if I had I to pick a fandom, tonight, it would be that. Craig is the guar guy. <laughs> Just it, I think it's a toss up. Oh, no, no, totally. No, I mean, we all have fandoms. We all have our fandoms. Come on, I do the. Uh, the funniest thing so is, and, I think and everybody I went to school with called me so guar because, like, because I like the band. It was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Well, you know, no, no, maybe I wouldn't even say like a super. I'm just saying, out of all of us, you probably have have yeah, been the most knowledge longer than the rest than all of us. Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, I, I would definitely enjoyed them along. Definitely have the most knowledge. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That that's the cool <laughs> thing about all of us is that we all have knowledge in very different things, right? Absolutely. Yep. It's just crazy, like. How little you know about somebody until you get them on a roll about something. Yep. Absolutely. No, no, no. Come on. I will never argue about any fact that James has on wrestling. I just won't. I won't. I'll be like, nope, that's, that's probably fact. a good idea. So, that's why I was that, challenging that, a lot of Jason. She loves thing. wrestling. I was like, no. It's an interesting <laughs> way to find out about yourself, too. Yes. Yeah, I know. I was so like, oh, God, I am a dick about this. Something and realize how much it matters to you. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I mean, we, we talk about gatekeeping from time to time, you know, but sometimes, sometimes, sometimes yep. there it's has happened. to be somebody there keeping out the riffraff. Well, it's earlier today, sometimes it's a matter of letting people getting have real getting information. To understand why it's important, right? It's not a matter of gatekeeping. It's letting them know that there's more to it. It's, it's, I know, I know. It's it's a tag. It's it's one of those things people say, like anything. Like, I have a mother-in-law named Karen, for goodness sake. <laughs> Karen. It's okay. She won't mind me saying it. 
That's funny. <laughs> but like earlier, she is, earlier today, I think in that way that she will ask for your manager. Oh, oh god, no. but uh, she will get the best of anything in this world. My first Valentine's Day. I guess we're right by Valentine's Day, so this is a good story for right now. But like my first flowers i got five dozen because she didn't think the ones my husband ordered me the first time were good enough (laughs) (laughs) yeah like i wouldn't say that's necessarily gatekeeping though because like earlier today i had an instance where i saw a post about brian baker the guitar player for bad religion and and all those guys um i guess it's his birthday and so it was like a birthday post to him, but they said he was only in bad religion until 2019. And I was like, no, he's definitely still in bad religion. <laughs> it, 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 I was like, it was Greg Stetson that left, not Brian Baker. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, it, uh, it was like you're dumb. <laughs> you get, get your facts straight, bud. I don't know, I don't know who told <laughs> you he left bad religion, but still there. <laughs> he didn't leave. He's still there. He's just quiet. <laughs> he is a quiet dude, but he's a hell of a right? guitar player and happy <laughs> birthday to him. So, but yeah, like Guar. I don't know. Guar. I gotta... So, Just like I said, if I'm, if I'm going to become a fan, it's because they absolutely um, abide by their stage show thing. Like they, they absolutely make sure their fans understand that they're still going to be there as that. Right. Yeah. They don't stray from it. They don't let the Okay, and I'm going to say this, the sleazy record companies of the world turn them into something they're not. Right. Now you're never going to get as big as you want to be that way. And I say this to all of my band friends who talk about selling out. You will never, ever be as big as you ever want to be. You have to make some decisions. Yeah, In your soul, you have to make some decisions. And that's the yeah. truth, in your soul. Yeah. And Guar didn't do that. They They kept their soul. And Even though they oh, are the they most out there, have. they the, kept again, their soul. The most known unknown band on the planet. Yeah, no, yeah. but I mean, literally, if you think about it, is what they do. Most people are like, "Oh, you're the devil," right? Pretty much. They kept oh, their soul. They oh, they've embraced that. Big... They don't give a yeah. fuck what people. Well, like, like, why wouldn't you, right? I mean, if you if you stop and look at it from their perspective, why the fuck yeah. wouldn't you embrace that exact thought? You got a bunch of. A prissy Midwesterners upset about the fact that you have some fake blood in a stage show. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And a cuddle. Like, why wouldn't you I mean, the worst part is the priest, obviously. They got their cod piece stolen. Ah, the cuttlefish. <laughs> cuttlefish. <laughs> the priest. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah. See, now for me, okay, the female ver- lady up there, at least they had a female lady up there and she represented what she wanted to represent. Oh. I don't necessarily agree with some of the stuff she did, but that's well, neither here nor there for me to judge. And we're talking about the saying? same like, chick, man. She channel like 10,000 volts of electricity. She oh, said so it. She's in, you know what? I have yeah. to say, yeah, she did some stuff I don't agree with, but she was fucking amazing and she yes. stood with those boys. Oh, she stood better with than those Volvatron, boys and who was just like a raging there. alcoholic. The only female, oh, yeah. the, the only other female they tried to get. Yeah, she was bad. Yeah. Dan- Danielle Stamp, that's her name. I'm and they will, they around, will tell basically. you exactly because I've seen nice. on interviews where like, well, what happened to the girl in the band Voltron? He's like, what do you do with a raging alcoholic? Send her my way, please, because I respect her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kim Dila, who played Voltron, she ended up being a yeah piece of work because uh, you know what she stood her ground she did what she was doing she stood up with those boys Danielle, she didn't shy yeah. away from anything that they yeah. put out there and put her own femininity out there when a lot of women would like me shy away from that and that's the great i mean she did that. don't need a man you know like <laughs> one of the no seriously like songs you could ever hear <laughs> If she's down for what she was doing, do it. Be, like I always tell you guys, do you. Yep. You do you. And that's all, that's all I try to do. Yep. You do you. That's all I can, <laughs> all I can do. Like, I can't be anybody else. Let's... Except all one right. day a year, and that's how I'll, I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep my brain over here instead of where it normally is. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I thought you were going to say Santa Claus. <laughs> no. My husband is Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they all though? Oh man. <laughs> I could have been Santa Claus. Had I kept the weight on. It's not as fun as you would think. <laughs> oh I, yeah, I know. I'm I'm paying because you know I lost all the weight, but now everything hurts. <laughs> I hear this. I hear this from guys who are really big and then they lose a super amount of weight and like everything just hurts afterwards. The back, the knee, like when, when people you, come you up to me. Because you hurt your body like, being big. Yeah, because you're putting a lot of weight on everything. Like you're carrying a fucking load. Yeah. But like uh, people always ask like when I'm like moving real gingerly or something if I got a limp or something like that because my hip's been out of place for four days. You know, they'll be like, what hurts? Knees, hips, knees, hips, back? And I'm like, yes. It's like this whole mechanism. <laughs> I, yes, I deal yeah. with that. Do you still deal with it now? I mean, you like, like you drop it. All the time. Yeah, yeah. it's a miserable yeah. fucking experience, yeah. dude. It's, it's, hey, guys. Yeah. I'll give you a yoga class every once a week if you I want. Need to one. I need one. I don't need one. Go live and I will give you guys a yoga class. And I promise I'll wear like... Trust me, I need that shit. Downward I, dog I, I, makes I, me feel uncomfortable, but it does feel good. That's what I'm saying. No, it's it's actually part. really nice for the body and the breathing. Actually, it's not even the stretching; it's the breathing that's the most important. I'd be a pretty yeah, keep your heart, keep keep your heart in like, good shape. Yep. I will say, yep. like I will argue this for yoga. It's not uh, it's not something that works when you have a frame like mine. Not completely, but it does. Okay, so definitely here's the thing. The thing about it is, and I and I talk about this because I had to do with my kids during the homeschool shit. I had to do PE. I wasn't going to not have them still like be doing something, you know? And uh, it's, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. So stretching, this, that, the other. Not a competition. You don't have to stretch as far as me. I don't have to, you know what I mean? There is no winning with stretching. You just You're stretch. just doing it. <laughs> yep. Right. It's not a competition. Take yourself to your own personal limit. I would like to yes, yes, I, mean, we'll I like food. Food tastes I mean, good. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I love food. Guess what? I told my husband, I said, I may not get skinny, but I'll be healthy. <laughs> I like to tell the <laughs> and then I got skinny. Everybody confused. <laughs> I'm comfortable with who I am. <laughs> oh no i was i was tired okay i was a smoker for like 30 years i started like 10 years old i'm not even fucking kidding you <laughs> and then 14, so eating get... the shitty foods doing everything all my yeah. life all the crap food yep yep and then so at one point in time i weighed 220 pounds and i'm, I'm only five foot two. one that's yeah that's big for me so you were that's huge for me I was a happy round little oompa loompa. I was an oompa loompa. Oompa loompas are orange. <laughs> Otherwise, you were just a sphere. A sphere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be fine. Oh. And 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 I just want to be healthy now. It's not about anything else but being healthy. I want to breathe. Oh no. And okay, I want to move. And one day I'm gonna have fucking grandkids, and I actually want to do some shit. Oh, hey, speaking about grandkids, I'm, I'm about to be a grandfather. I'm forty. Oh, wow, I'm congratulations, shit. Woo. This is my, uh, I'm about to be a grandma too. My youngest stepchild. Uh, she is 22. She is pregnant, and I am super excited because my kid is about to be four. And apparently, I like it. Who fucking yes. knew? <laughs> <laughs> oh. no. We now know Jason's new I'm name. Okay with the grandma Papa. part. I'm well, not fair enough. Okay <laughs> with how old my kid it's is, awesome. but I'm okay with the grandma. Now part. he's gonna be hanging out with Lee Pierce all the time, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. how do we go from Guar to family help? <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's why, that's, why, that's why it's called dad mented. I know I'm a mom, but that's why it's called dad. Hey, you were brought in specifically to have a female perspective. The whole reason you are here is because we get insular in the way we speak. And we're dumb. Yeah. And it's not, we need an outside perspective. We need an external perspective. It, it, and we're dumb. It's first information on. You know, and, and it, like I said in the beginning, I'm not necessarily your typical woman. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm really not. 
I matter. look at different perspectives. <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> I don't I hang out with a lot of dudes. And I usually give most of my dude friends like an insider perspective of <laughs> that women think. I'm, I, yeah, I, I'm that girl. I guess I'm that girl. That's, I'm that lady. I would argue I'm that person, girl ever, whatever you want to call it. Same thing because girls are, from my perspective, this is just what I have seen through the course of my life. Every female I've ever known is harder on other females than they are on guys. Oh, no, no, no. We treat each other very differently than we treat you. And you guys treat us differently than you treat each other. And that is a truth. I do know about that. Every guy I've ever met is a friend. I've never met a guy that I wasn't like, yeah, we can hang out. Yeah. See, <laughs> like, it's not a, I'm not sure. That's why when we first met and I said all chicks suck and I took back my my quote, I took I took that back because there are right. some females in this world that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. Um, but in general, like I have I take issue with some females and it's because some of us say things and don't show the same things that we say. Right. Oh no, I'll give you that. And again, women treat women differently than they treat men and vice versa. So we have a different experience in that. All right. So so you're okay, and I'm not saying your wife, your anybody's right. wife specifically, right? Your wife is going to treat me differently than, say, my husband. My wife doesn't like women. Flat See, out doesn't that, like them. Right? Just doesn't like them. It's no, not even like, her. It's like I have it, very, it very, very few female friends. Period. Because most of us, most of us think we're in competition. I'm not in a competition. I'm on a whole different level, baby. Mm. That's we're playing was, a different game. That's what I was going to say. We're playing, the best. Liars. I think honestly, I would like your wife. I think I'd even like Craig's wife. I think that we would actually get along. Probably. It's a. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do. I think that we, that we would get along. Hey, maybe one show we switch it, and my husband's here, and you guys is what. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd it's still hilarious. be here. Because, yeah. <laughs> I'd be in the background, goofing <laughs> off. <laughs> like, you know, I'd be doing like a little elevator thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, like this. It's a weird side note, but uh, Wild Nights, that uh, Mellencamp cover of uh, Who Is It, The Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So all the girls walk by dressed up for each other. Yeah. That line, because it's. It's kind of a true statement. I mean, it's, it's not. Yeah. A, it's, it's, I don't care what you're wearing. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> it sucks because no matter, it, it, you don't even try it. It's a competitive. Women act like they're not competitive, <laughs> but they very much are. They very, you know, they used to be like, oh, men are so competitive. Stop being, no, no, no. Women are so competitive. It is so awful. I wish we would lift each other up instead of tearing each other down. I'm speaking to you, women. <laughs> I wish. Exactly one of you that ran across this. It's important. <laughs> Spread the message. It's important. No, our whole 18%. Our whole 18% of women, please. <laughs> I am paying attention, boys. I am paying attention. Hell, that was worth it. Oh, man. <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry please let's and i've been i've actually been saying this look for a long time even to my daughter stop it let's lift each other up let's stop tearing each other down who cares we're not playing the same game it's not even the same stop doing this let's start yeah no no more random this. side comment Women that whole people. comment would have been more hilarious you just said stop it, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> just, i've been telling my daughter forever Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> uh, on that note, from Guar, the family issues. What a transition. Uh, family matters. The tour. <laughs> issues matters, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Carl's yeah, best father ever. If you haven't, check out Guar. Do the love of God. Favorite. Go see them in concert. If that's the first time you hear their music, that's awesome because there's no better way to hear it. Mothers, hold uh, on to your children. Just <laughs> oh, mothers, bring your children. Bring, bring the kids to the show. That was our Nobody generation. Cares. Sorry. We're, I, thought, I thought we were going nostalgic. <laughs> yeah. Go check out Guar. Um, they've actually got a new album coming out this year. Holy so, crap. yeah. I'm Woo. looking forward to it. <laughs> and 
so I'm sure they'll be touring. <laughs> but I don't know. This was fun. This was fun. It was, it was fun. We I missed like you guys. Fun. I missed you guys. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done one. So yeah, we're back. We got the suicide puppets back. coming soon. Yep. I I'm pretty sure next Saturday suicide puppets. I'm waiting. Have they sent us anything? I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe kind of looking perhaps that. I think it'll be interesting and we're gonna I, just, I actually to like them I really like them they're on my playlist they're not bad they're I not just bad. in relation yeah. to Gwar, I want to ask him about the logistics of carrying seven people to a show <laughs> right I mean, that's a lot of people yeah. that's yeah. a lot of people but we're gonna bring our buddy Chris Niles back on again tanks. soon seven, seven, don't forget the blood tanks six six blood tanks but our buddy Chris Styles will be back here soon, talking about nice. some classic movies. As always, he's gonna. We're gonna let him take over and do his thing like we always do. Yep. We'll go off the rails, I'm sure. <laughs> that's life. Again, that's what we do. But <laughs> until then, until next time, Terry, Jason, Craig. 